that song? <laughs> Am I in focus? Okay, so let's talk about fretless bass, one of these little bad boys. And you know, I mean, if you're anything like me as well, you love all the fretless guys, right? You know, such as like Pino Palladino. <laughs> Jacko Pistorius. Richard Bonner. Now I've got to say, I'm having a little bit of a love affair with the fretless. I used to play one of these exclusively for about three years. I only had one fretless bass, I didn't have any fretted basses at all, so I'm particularly fond of the instrument, but I'm having a particularly strong love affair with them at the minute because I've just spent a week with Gary Willis recording a brand new signature course coming from Gary. We've partnered with Gary. We, yeah, it's going to be cool. You've got to look out for it. It's going to be awesome. You know, if it's a week, but of course, yeah, yeah. Not on the yeah, that's coming soon, so keep a lookout. But in this video, we're going to be talking about why this, the fretless bass, Totally sucks. I'm going to be giving you five reasons why, and I'm also going to be giving you five reasons of how to fix it as well. So let's get on with number one. Okay, so number one is obviously playing the damn thing in tune, right? It can be tricky to play these in tune, and you will have heard all kinds of advice about playing in dark rooms and using voodoo and all of the rest of it, okay? The number one intonation tip I can give you in terms of playing the fretless bass is getting your technique together. Because if you've got a bad technique, it's going to be really tough. To play the thing in tune, okay? The misconception is that it is hard to play fretless. It's actually not hard to play fretless. It's the same as playing a fretted bass, but if you've got bad technique, that's when it becomes hard because it almost becomes impossible to play in tune. Take a simple C major scale, for instance. Okay, super easy to play in tune, right? But that's because I've got nice spacing between all my fingers and my left hand, and my fingers are right where they need to be over the strings, right? If I was holding the bass like this, like a lot of people play, then I'm having to shift to each note, okay? You're gonna have to do this. Whoa, now that's out of tune, right? So when you're, when you're playing fretless bass, you wanna have a really clean, fluid left hand technique that gives you the ability to have your fingers over the frets that you wanna play. The second reason why fretless bass sucks is that when you are reading a chart or a lead sheet or a cheat sheet or notation on a gig, it can be really easy to trip yourself up and get lost. And the reason why this is, is because say on fretted bass, you don't really have to look so much of where you are all the time. The fret's there, it's gonna keep you in tune, right? On the fretless, you know, te you tend to look at the fingerboard a little bit more. Now imagine if you, yes, you sitting right there, are my cheat sheet, right? And I'm, re I'm on a gig and I'm looking at you and I'm reading the chords, right? And I'm playing. Okay, and I want to check something. I've heard a little bit of intonation. I go like this, then I look back at the sheet and I'm like, oh, where am I? Where am I, okay? So doing this, I've done this a lot. I've seen a lot of people make this mistake. The trick uh, to get around this, and I give Gary Willis a shout out, is to sit with your neck here at, pointing at your chart, right? And this means you can play a line, whatever it is. I can be watching my chart. 
And if I want to reference myself on the neck here, I just dip my head, reference, and then I'm back up. I'm not taking the chart or the lead sheet out of my line of sight. That is really crucial, okay? If I'm here, I'm looking down, and then I'm looking back, I have to figure out where I am on that cheat sheet, where I am on that chart. So have your neck pointing at your lead sheet, okay? And then keep the, the keep the chart and the neck in the line of sight. So if you want to check your ref or re check or reference where you are on the neck, all you need to do is drop your head and then you're back right in front of the chart. Number three is how to set your intonation correctly on a fretless bass because on a fretted bass it's super easy. You play the note the harmonic at the 12th fret and then you push it down and make sure that the fretted note is in tune with the open string. That's how you set your intonation, okay? On a fretless bass it's a little weird because, well, where do you have your finger slightly behind the line as you were on a, fret, on a fretted bass or do you have it right on top of the line, okay? And I've asked a whole host of different people this same question and I have a whole host of different answers okay well I was talking to Gary Willis um, when I was hanging out with him and he actually said that he was he's been doing it wrong for years and now can't go back to uh, correcting it okay what he used to do is set the intonation so he'd play the harmonic at the 12th fret and then he'd fret on or kind of fret the note, he'd push down and have his finger just behind the line as he would do on a fretted bass, right? And that's how he used to set his intonation. Now he said that this means down here, on these lines here, you've got to play slightly in front of the line, slightly this way, and down here you've got to play slightly behind the line, or even more behind the line than here. So you're constantly correcting yourself, right? Now he said that in his later years, he's realized that you should push down right on the line on the 12th fret, which means you're going to be playing right on the line down here, and up here as well, it'll be right on the line. So it's consistent over the entire board. So when it comes to setting your intonation, you do it right on top of the line, or where the line would be if you're playing a, um, an unlined fretless. And we're going to get to that unlined fretless thing in a minute. Number four is controlling your inner fretless urges. What the heck's that, Scott? Okay, so bear with me, and this is something that I suffer from. It's something that many other fretless bass players suffer from. The inner fretless urge, right, is to do this. Too much vibrato, okay? It's like it's just there for the taking and we can't help ourselves but take it. If you watch any really fantastic fretless bass players like Pino for instance, Gary Willis, okay? They do not go over the top with the vibrato, okay? In fact, for the most part, they play it completely straight. <laughs> And if you do want to put vibrato in, then you can just rotate on the end of the finger. You don't need to. See, sick. <laughs> now, I'm not saying you can't do it at all. Obviously, everything has its place. Just like that. Now, number five, the elephant in the room. Do you get a line fretless such as this, which me has you know, lines where the frets should be, or do you go with an unlined fretless? My preference is lined because it makes it a little easier for, for me to check where I am on the neck. I use a lot of geometric shapes when I'm thinking about, you know, improvising and creating bass lines. I'm always, I've got this kind of like, um, whole geometric pattern thing happening all over the neck, okay? And it helps me with that. It also helps me, as I said, kind of like just double check, am I, am I in the right place? The band might be blazing. Am I actually in tune because I can't hear myself? Yikes, okay? It helps me with that, right? I'm not saying that it is the only way though. There is plenty of people that play unlined fretlesses. But I should add a caveat that even though when you watch somebody playing and it looks like they've got an unlined fretless, a lot of the time that fretless has been defretted, so it will still have dark marks 
where the frets have been. I know, for instance, that Jacko's base was like that. It, it looked unlined, but it actually was lined because you could see where the frets had been filled. And I'm sure that he used them. But, you know, as I said, I'm not against unlined fretlesses. Just I need every little bit of help I can get in terms of playing stuff in tune. And man, if lines get me there, well, I'm gonna use them. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that lesson, guys. If you do want to take this whole fretless bass thing a little further, hopefully you do because it's an amazing instrument, then I do recommend that you check out Steve Lawson's fretless bass course at scottsbasslessons.com. When you grab your 14-day free trial, you'll get access to Steve's course, but also 40 other courses. Courses from me, courses from Rich Brown, courses from Steve Jenkins, courses from Evan Marion, courses from Rufus Philpot, courses from... A some of the best bass players in the world all in one place and you also get to interact with our faculty in real time every single week in our weekly live streams as well it's essentially the ultimate online bass school for bass players such as yourselves to take your bass playing to the next level this is a completely new opportunity if you're anything like me an old schooler you can remember what it used to be like you know we either used to go to a random dude that used to be teaching at a guitar shop you know or we just sort of like scratch around and try and get there on our own now you can actually get a solid education with some of the best bass players in the world from the comfort of your own home for i think it's it's less than a dollar a day it's something like 80 cents a day something stupid like that if you want to grab a free trial just click the link below and it will take you through and you can get started today and hopefully i will see you on the inside now without further ado take it easy and i'll see you in the shed whoa 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 where are you going if you haven't subscribed to the scots bass lessons channel yet here on youtube click the link subscribe i release two videos like this every single week you can also check out our other videos over there and if you've not checked out scotsbasslessons.com membership check it out you can grab your 14 day free trial over there